So I get a lot of questions on my channel on what jobs in tech actually provide you the flexibility of being able to work remotely. And in this video, I've curated a list of the top five jobs that have plenty of remote job opportunities. And FYI, if you guys are looking for the top remote cybersecurity jobs instead, I also have a video on that linked in my description. The first job on this list is a cloud solutions architect. First thing to note is that a cloud solutions architect is very different from a cloud architect. Typically for cloud solution architects, you're going to be focusing on one specific cloud platform, for example, the like AWS, in which case this role is very popular for. Part of your job is really to optimize the cost and performance of AWS solutions for a specific customer. And there are plenty of certifications out there that help you do this, that help you break into this field, which is another reason why cloud, cloud engineering, Anything in the cloud space, to be honest, is getting very popular these days. I did recently make a video on how what you'll need for this job are specifically knowledge and skills in compute, networking, storage, and database services as part of the cloud platform, knowledge in deploying, managing, and operating workloads, as well as implementing security controls and compliance requirements, plus knowledge and skills in using different command line tools related to networking, security services, and infrastructure components of the cloud platform that you're working with. Again, AWS is is probably the most popular one and I believe they also have many certifications out there if you're looking to take an official certification exam. I think another reason why solutions architects and cloud roles are getting more popular is also because of the fact that they typically don't require a strong coding background but they also typically have a pretty decent starting salary and you may not need to be as technical as other roles in tech with equivalent salaries. For example on Glassdoor the average salary for a cloud security architect is $117,000 per year. Year. That is a lot of money, especially when this role is more so of a solution slash consultant based role compared to a more technical hands-on role where you're not necessarily writing scripts. You may not need to have as much of a technical skill set, which has definitely become very popular. The next role on this list is a security analyst. For those of you who don't know, I currently work as a security analyst and as someone who is currently working remotely, I do think this is definitely one of the best jobs out there, especially in tech with very decent salaries, job security, as well as interest interesting work to be done. I've also personally talked to recruiters who specifically know that hiring for cybersecurity professionals typically means hiring for professionals who may not be in the big cities or necessarily want to work in an office or have a long commute. So as part of your day-to-day -day roles, it really depends on what your company has your security teams working on. For example, a security analyst could be working on the red team side or the blue team side, but just speaking from a general perspective, typically a security analyst is someone who could be working on a broad variety of things, whether you're looking at security requests from all of your various stakeholders and customers. You may be analyzing different anomalies and logs. You may be receiving alerts from the different applications and things in your infrastructure. You may also be reporting on different security metrics, various hacker or cybersecurity news, or maybe even just providing input and insight into some kind of new feature or new application or whatever your company is working on and being able to provide some kind of input from a cybersecurity perspective so that security is built in inherently into an application or a product, whatever it is, so that it's not necessarily an afterthought and more so something that's incorporated into the process. Personally, of course, I am biased, but I do think working in cybersecurity is one of the best roles in tech, especially during this AKA tech recession. If it's even really considered a tech recession, cybersecurity was definitely one of the areas that wasn't as affected compared to other roles in tech. I also think even in the face of generative AI and the various different AI technologies that we've seen a buzz in the media, I still think that cybersecurity jobs are still very good options and likely are going to have minimal impact. Not saying of course that we'll never be impacted. I do think that eventually the jobs of today may not exist and that's something to always keep in mind. Like for example, jobs from 50 years ago may not exist today, but I do think that there's also a lot of opportunity that comes into play with generative AI and how that will affect any of these jobs in this list. But I do want to call out specifically that I don't think that AI will replace cybersecurity analysts or professionals, at least in the upcoming future. I also made a video recently on the impacts of generative AI as well as how to actually use ChatGPT to learn cybersecurity as a beginner. So I will link both of those videos down in my description below. And the average salary for a security analyst in the US is about $78,000 per year. I would really take this average with a grain of salt because I know many security analysts, including myself, which I've already made videos on you know, salary transparency, but I was able to start in a cybersecurity role 
out of college at six figures and that is something really important to keep in mind you shouldn't always be taking these average salaries on Glassdoor, on indeed salary.com as the cold hard truth because there are definitely going to be people making potentially less than this salary average and many times people making much more than this salary average and in terms of certifications i think for entry level your best bet is probably going to be the security plus the comptia security plus it is also the certification that i studied for or another popular one is the giac gsec certification which is their security essential certification another very popular one for beginners in cybersecurity. number three is a devops engineer a devops engineer has skills that spans both development and operations they are typically going to be an it generalist who has a wide range of development ops coding, infrastructure management, sysadmin, and CI/CD pipeline tooling. They may also have some kind of background with software development, whether it's dealing with code reviews, change controls, any software development lifecycle processes, as well as of course code deployment. DevOps is definitely one of the most important areas in tech, especially when it comes to obviously deploying code. Every company's DevOps process is going to look different. Some may be in the very early stages and others may be very mature and this really all varies depending on how manual and how automated your deployment process is. DevOps stands for exactly what it sounds like, development and operations put together. And the engineering part is going to be the CI CD pipeline tools that you're using in your company. The automation, whether it's in scripts, different technical solutions, automation, of course, and essentially just how your company brings code from a developer's local environment to whatever pre-prod or non-prod environment for testing or QA or user acceptance, and then eventually into the production environment. DevOps engineers are typically going to be the ones building out that entire pipeline from the ground up, depending on, of course, how mature your DevOps process looks like. Release engineering includes any work required to build and deploy application code. Every company is going to be using different tools and processes depending on the coding language, the environment, how many environments you have, and every other security control that is built into your CI/CD pipeline. Personally, I think this is a very interesting crossover between the operation side and the development side. I've noticed a lot of DevOps engineers typically start as developers and maybe get a little bit sick of the way that code is brought to production and then eventually switch over to a more operational role as a DevOps engineer. And essentially a big part of your job is building that internal tooling for developers in your company to be able to succeed and make their lives easier when it comes to bringing code to production because sometimes depending on the company again this could take weeks to months and for other companies it could take a couple seconds a couple minutes but if you're a big company like for example a bank you're also not going to have a very easy or simple process to push code to production because you're typically going to be wanting to rely on a very stable environment and those code changes could very likely take from weeks to months and the average salary for a devops engineer in the us is about a hundred and four thousand dollars per year based on glassdoor and number four on this list is a technical project manager technical project managers manage both the technical and the non-technical side of a project in fact for many roles like big tech companies they may already require their project managers to have some kind of technical background whether they're coming from a software development background or maybe that you graduated with a technical degree like a computer science degree for example but they typically are going to have some kind of background that allows them to easily communicate with developers and that I think is one of the key skills here a lot of times project managers may not have necessarily a technical background enough to be able to talk to developers about how long is this vulnerability going to take to fix how big is this bug or this story or this ticket going to take and if you're able to come in with some kind of technical depth or technical knowledge it makes it a whole lot easier for you to be able to weigh those priorities in terms of hey i know this is not going to take very long if it's for example some kind of high level css bug or something that is a quick fix in the code compared to something that may be much deeper for example resolving vulnerabilities that come up in multiple instances or multiple different areas of the code of course depending on how the code is written being a project manager is definitely a role for someone who is very organized and able to communicate successfully with technical and non-technical stakeholders which personally i think is a very important skill to have one of the most popular certifications for PMs is specifically the PMP certification, which is the project management professional certification. This is also one that I actually learned about in college because of the fact that it was so popular. And the average salary for a 
technical project manager or TPM in the US is about $111,000 per year. This is definitely a great role for anyone who wants to go into tech and has a technical background, but maybe is looking for a switch in their career and wants to dip their toes a little bit into that business or project management side of technology, which is a great way to expand your skill set on top of existing technical skills or coding skills. And the last role I want to talk about in this video is a SRE or a site reliability engineer. Personally, as well as from my experience, SREs are really the backbone of an organization. If anything, SREs are the ones who keep the lights on. Um, I think this is a very, very important role to be in. And it is also very technical, very deep in the weeds and involved in all the implementation, deployment, architecture side. They touch many different areas of your organization. And this is probably also the team that is managing your cloud infrastructure, your data center infrastructure. If you have some kind of hybrid solution where your company has a data center, SRE is the one that maintaining and managing those, this team is typically also going to be heavily on call for issues or when the site is down or when your services aren't functioning right. They are typically also going to be the ones called in by an incident response team. So as you can see, I have a huge amount of respect for SREs. I really do think it's one of the most important roles in the organization. But of course, that also comes with a lot of responsibility, a lot of a need for having a very strong technical background, as well as ability to get very hands-on and in-depth into technical problems that may need very fast solutions solutions, especially for example, if a customer instance is down or if a public facing site is down and a little bit of SRE trivia. This role was initially created by Google. In fact, they have published a few articles on the specific topic and I'm quoting this article specifically, but in the words of Ben Trainer, an SRE is what happens when you ask a software engineer to design an operations function. SRE is a way to bridge the gap between developers and IT, even with a DevOps culture. Again, quote unquote, it isn't SRE versus DevOps, it's SRE with with DevOps. Again, this goes back to the whole CI CD pipeline, the deployment of code, our company's data center and cloud infrastructures. These really all tie back together in a very neat little bow with the SRE team. SREs are dedicated full time to creating software that improves the reliability of systems in production, including fixing issues, responding to incidents, and according to the four golden signals of monitoring in the SRE world, these include latency, traffic, errors and saturation and the average salary in the u.s for a site reliability engineer is about $105,000 per year based on Glassdoor. So hopefully this video was helpful to you guys and it gave you an idea of what remote jobs are out there, not only in cybersecurity, which is typically what we talk about on this channel, but also just across the tech space. I know there's a lot of buzz still around what jobs that AI and ChatGPT are going to replace, but I do think that most of the jobs listed in this video are still going to be safe areas to go into, even during a tech recession, as well as the growth of AI, at least for the foreseeable future. But this also just brings back up the lesson of continuous learning and growing because the more we grow our skill set, the harder it becomes to replace us in our jobs depending on the sector that you want to go into. For example, if you go into a job specifically on writing or QA testing or anything that could be easily be taken over by some kind of AI bot, I do think that there could be more risk in terms of job security long term. But again, the lesson here really is to continuously learn and continuously grow your different skill sets and of course to be able to make pivots as your career goes on without worrying too much about other the news and hubbub. All right, so that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and let me know in the comments below if there are any other video topics you would like to see from me in the future. Feel free to drop them and I will add them to my backlog. We also do have a Discord channel if you guys are interested in joining and keeping up with the community. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!